What's up guys, welcome back. This is Bamboo. You're watching Bamboo Gaming. So I hit infinite the other day and I just want to talk about the decks I used and why I use them. Especially when I'm pull three complete. <clears throat> Sorry, I just ate. Um, but I have, uh, I don't have Shuri and I don't have Thanos and it's still possible with, I think it's more possible with a pull three completed deck. If you slide through with just a like a 75% pull three completed you're very lucky um but i think what you really do need is a solid combo that surprises at the end uh and or a disruptive deck that's why i think sarah control is really good but this is my version of like kind of control is a thor zabu deck and this one got me pretty far too but i had to alternate between this one and another one that i'm gonna show you but it runs Thor, uh, the two counters, uh, actually three counters. I do Killmonger, Shang-Chi, and Enchantress, uh, everyone's favorite arrow. And then we got Daredevil. Daredevil really helps to know if I want to use arrow on turn five for like Shuri plays or, or save it for turn six. But everything else is pretty solid and everything's understandable here. I do run Iceman and Scorpion. I do Zabu just to make this possible, the turn six, Shang-Chi Enchantress play. Uh, Lockjaw, uh, just to hit something, really. It's just like a free drop because uh, uh, you know you're not going to be hitting everything. It does suck when you do hit Lockjaw and you hit one of the surprise cards at the late game. So this is kind of situational Lockjaw. It's not something you can just like free drop. But if you just have a bad hand, it's good to just hit Lockjaw on turn 4. But this deck really helped. And this one was kind of like my main and go-to. Is this combo is Wave and She-Hulk. Wave and She-Hulk is very good. Um, they're definitely going to patch Wave. I know it. But while well, you still can, I guess for the next couple days. But this these two cards mixed with any of these five makes this deck so crazy. So, like I said, how it works, turn five, you do wave. It's like death wave, but you're using any of these things. And I think, I know, uh, death wave also have certain counters like Shang-Chi and Arrow. But for me, I also like having White Queen here to know what high card they have on turn four, at least. So I know how they were playing the game. And then Enchantress is just something crazy. I like having, uh, shutting down a lot of, like, tier two decks, um, sometimes Thanos it works, but not really. Patriot deck, so you're not, like, losing to really, um, like, n not... Because if, I say if you're playing a Patriot deck, a Cerebro deck, uh, a Discard deck, this shuts them out completely. Hit, hit a Morbius, hit their Patriot or Mystique, because they'll put Patriot, Mystique, Blue Marvel sometimes in one lane, or one of, two out of the three in one lane, and they want to flood the board usually with uh, Ultron, so this helps. Um, st dumb stuff, like if you're playing Mr. Negative and they hit um, Iron Man. So Enchantress is really important, especially when you're climbing, because you don't want to... You kind of want to focus... These decks are really focused to go against Shuri and Thanos. If you don't have it, you're going to count... You're going to build a deck that counters. So, like I said, these two decks were kind of what I used to get into Infinite, and the reason why I have close to like 13, 14 decks is like I, um, like I said, you want to play, you want to play a lot of the meta decks and see how they function, where they want to place their cards, what locations they like, what locations they don't like, what locations do they usually leave, and and then out of all the decks that you played, find the playstyle that you like and then stick to it. It definitely helps that you stick to the deck that you like. And that you're really familiar with. You play a thousand times. And it makes games more comfortable. And you feel more confident. And that's what you want to feel like. Um, going into each match. Even though they happen like uh, pretty often. You want to always keep going into matches. Knowing what your What favors you. So uh, that's just a more quick. That's just a quick video of what I wanted to talk about. Um. Just because uh, after when you hit infinite, that's it. Like, there is after you get that card back, uh, there's no incentive to, like, keep going. 
and this is like the second part of the discussion I want to talk about is like the matchmaking. Um, when you hit infinite, um, you there's two things you can do. You can increase your MMR or lower your MMR. And the pros and cons about each each one is if you increase your MMR, all you're gonna do is face bots, and you're just gonna hit a nasty ranking. Like um, there's some guys named uh, Codeco, and they reach rank a thousand. Uh, uh, same thing with Educated Collins. And um, what they talk about is all you're gonna be seeing is bots. It's not gonna be a fun experience. You're gonna lose a lot of. Uh, it's almost a disadvantage of to the player because they're not playing human players anymore and they're not learning to adapt. They're not learning. They're not learning anything. And what you can do, the second thing you can do when you reach infinite is you can lower your MMR. And what that does is you get to be placed or you'll be playing with lower ranking players and that helps you rank up after the season. So you'll drop down to 70 and climbing up becomes way easier so that's why you see people reach infinite in a day or two days or less than 24 hours and it's ridiculous i mean do you know what they're doing uh i mean you can't hate because if that's the knowledge that they have from hitting infinite multiple times of course they're gonna take advantage of it so why not right so but that's definitely gonna be patched soon but that's like the two strategies of what you can do when you hit infinite but um yeah after that, definitely, I just hit back 70, and then it's just a normal grind for me because I'm not doing anything with my MMR. So, yeah, guys, that's just a quick video of what I want to talk about. Uh, MMR matchmaking is definitely going to change next season, but definitely this is the hardest season to hit infinite. So, uh, if you hit infinite, congratulations. And if you didn't, it's definitely going to be a better experience next month. So, yeah, just wait till next month, try again. Don't stress over it and just enjoy, have fun with the game because it's still a game. So thanks guys for watching. Until next time, peace.